What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a look at the Momentum Dual Conical Burr Hand Grinder. Before we jump in and start talking in detail about the Momentum hand grinder, I just want to say real quick, I am not a barista, nor Momentum hand grinder team sent me this grinder to check out. Um, I got this on loan from a buddy of mine here in Arizona um, who paid for it and ordered it a while back and happened to get one. And so he let me borrow it before he even really played with it. So I could kind of play with it, learn it, get to, get to understand it, use it, and uh, share some information about it with you guys. So again, um, I'm not affiliated with I Am Not A Barista or Momentum Hand Grinder team. They didn't send me this for free. I'm strictly just sharing my thoughts on this uh, with you guys because I think it's kind of interesting and unique and I think it's worth considering if you're in the market for a hand grinder, um, even though it is a little bit on the pricey side, but we'll talk about that and we'll dive into all the details of that as we progress through this video. But I just wanted to let you know, these are my genuine thoughts. There's no bias here. You know, Again, I'm not affiliated with, with this company in any way. They didn't send me this grinder for free uh, and I don't get to keep it. I have to give it back to my buddy because I'm sure he wants to use it since he paid for it and then basically just gave it to me as soon as it came in. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's dive in and start talking about this guy. So I'm sure a lot of you out there are familiar with this grinder or have at least seen it kind of pop up in some advertising, maybe on social media. Maybe you saw Lance Hedrick's sort of preliminary review of this grinder about a year ago before it was you know, made into full production um, and started being available to buy. I've been doing filter brewing with it, pulling shots of espresso with it. And I gotta say overall, I'm really impressed with this grinder. Again, it is a little on the pricey side at around 500 US dollars, but when you look at what this grinder offers in comparison to some other um, high priced you know, hand grinders and even some higher priced, you know, electric grinders you're gonna buy or at least comparable price range electric grinders. I think this thing has some really unique features and some kind of novel features with it that um, are really cool and I think worth taking a look at if you're interested in hand grinding. So the first thing that I wanna talk about with the Momentum is the build quality. This thing is built really nicely. The machining quality on all these parts is really nice. The fit and finish quality is fantastic. You know, there's no like major gaps or loose parts or things that don't fit well. I mean, everything is just really, really solid on this grinder. The use of magnets, which we'll talk a little bit more about, is really nice. Um, the attention to detail just on some of the machine work and the ergonomics and just everything about this is, is really nice. It's super, super easy to grind with and I've really enjoyed using it. One of the first things that I noticed from an attention to detail standpoint was with, with the handle of this grinder. The, the way the knob feels in the palm of your hand, the ergonomics of this is really nice. The fact that they give you a second knob that's made of a wood instead of this machined aluminum, it's a nice, you know, heftier feeling than this machined aluminum. So if you prefer that, you have the option and it comes with it, which is really cool. It's got a removable little lock nut here where you can swap out the lids, they give you the option of a clear lid as well as this black one, and both of them have the phrase keep grinding etched into them. So not only do you get a very good hand grinder, you also get some motivational phrases when you buy this guy. And the other thing that I really like about this is the fact that you can adjust the length of the handle. You remove this thumb screw here, and you can separate the handle from this upper um, sort of mount portion, which has a ball and spring style detent in it. And there on the bottom of the handle here, there's a rail machined in that has uh, detent receivers in it. And you can adjust the length in four different positions of the handle. So you can adjust it to your comfort, your fit, um, and also, you know, the leverage you need for grinding. Obviously when grinding finer for espresso, it's easier if you have a little bit more leverage. So I've been leaving mine on the fully extended um, option, the longest option, just because I've been bouncing back and forth between espresso and filter brewing with this. This textured grip is really nice and it's really well bonded to the body. I haven't had it slip or rotate or move on me like I've experienced with some other hand grinders. The external adjustment for both the pre-breaker and finishing burr is really nice and smooth and I haven't had any issues with them 
them, you know, binding or locking up or anything like that. One thing that I thought was interesting, and I don't know if this was a design choice or for a specific reason, but the uh, adjustment dial here or indicators here and notches on the finishing burr adjustment are really easy to read. They're almost like etched and have like a white paint filling in them it looks like, but the pre-breaker adjustment does not have that same level of visibility. Moving down to the catch cup, this catch cup is really nice and it utilizes a ton of magnets to stick to the bottom of the grinder, which is fantastic. I haven't had this catch cup move or fall off or do anything weird uh, while using it, even when you know putting in a lot of effort to grind finer for espresso, it has stayed nice and stable on here. And the other thing that's really cool that you can kind of do is utilize this catch cup as a knocker. So when you're done grinding, you can take the catch cup and sort of knock back and forth like that against the magnets and rotate it around and get any of the remaining little particles of coffee that may be stuck to the bottom of the burr or something like that into the to the catch cup. The other area where you'll find some magnets is on the bottom of the catch cup, this lid here, which you can then put on the top of the catch cup to shake and kind of homogenize your grinds a little bit if you want to. Or another thing you can do is take the bottom of the catch cup off and take this little ring out and that opens up a space for you to put the supplied sieves. So they supply you with these uh, filter sieve screens here that go in the bottom of the dosing cup. You get a 400, a 600, and an 800 micron sieve. Um, this is really fun to experiment with, play around with. I don't normally um, sieve out my fines or sieve my, my coffee grinds. If you wanna experiment with it, you can. There's all sorts of interesting things you can do with filter sieves. You can um, sieve out the smaller particles, obviously, and then reintroduce those back into your filter brew, like half Way through um, and get some really interesting flavor results. Another thing that they supply you with is this chaff screen here. So basically this chaff screen is designed to hold back chaff that may fall off of the beans after they go through the pre-breaking burr before they go into the finishing burr. So if we take the finishing burr assembly out of the middle of the grinder, you'll see here there is a spot on top of the finishing burr entrance with some magnets on it where you can stick this chaff screen and collect any chaff particles before they go down into the finishing burr and remove that chaff from your grind. The idea of having a chaff screen in here between the pre-breaker and finishing burrs sort of stemmed from people um, taking their hand grinders, putting them really coarse, doing a grind, and then dumping those coarse grinds out on the table and either hand removing or blowing the chaff out and then scooping those coffee grounds up and re-grinding them on a finer grind setting to get their finished grind for whatever brewing method they're doing. This sort of eliminates the headache of having to do that if you're somebody that normally does that and wants to remove your chaff in that way. Having this built in is a really cool and unique uh, you know, option and idea with this grinder. I have experienced if I have the pre-breaker set pretty coarse that some of the larger particles, you know, actual chunks of the coffee bean, as well as chaff, will get stuck on the screen. Obviously the chaff getting stuck on here is great, that's the idea, but it holding back bigger particles of coffee that you want ground is not necessarily ideal, but it's definitely worth experimenting with to be able to have this built-in way to clean up your cup of of coffee and remove some of that chaff. A couple of other things they include is this nice cleaning brush and this Allen wrench for taking the grinder apart, which is what we're gonna do now since we've basically discussed all the features, options, and build quality. So even though the Momentum grinder does have more internal components than a standard single burr hand grinder, it's really easy to take apart. First thing you're gonna do is remove the catch cup off the bottom. That's going to expose the bottom of the finishing burr and also the retaining bolt for the finishing burr that holds it to its shaft. You're gonna grab the top of the grinder kind of with your palm and stabilize the, the handle here so that you, you can break the finishing burr bolt loose. You're gonna loosen it all the way. You can take it out all the way now if you want this bolt or you can leave it in there. Um, what I like to do is then take the um, finishing burr assembly off of the main body of the grinder and then finish taking the retaining bolt out. Just makes it a little bit easier to handle. Make sure obviously you don't lose that bolt and then you can kind of just smack in the palm of your hand or against a hard surface and that will reveal the burr here. This is the finishing burr. There's also a washer that goes on top and you're gonna to wanna to make note of the orientation of the washer. This little section here where there's like a raised lip goes up towards the bearing. So when you're putting it back together, remember that, that goes up and the flat surface, the flush surface is what sits on top of the burr. So, then from there, you can take the 
finishing burr shaft out, which is just this little shaft here. There's also another washer on here. And again, make sure you note the orientation. This washer has a slope up the top and also a, a, a ridge on the bottom. Uh, basically, just note the orientation when you're taking it apart. The sloped angle sort of goes up towards the top collar here where the other shaft locks in. So when you're putting it back together, obviously that's important. I usually just leave this upper washer on here. Uh, and there is basically the bottom um, finishing burr assembly all taken apart. This adjuster mechanism here is what houses the stationary burr around the outside. Both the finishing burr and the pre-breaker burr that we haven't taken out yet are really nicely machined and made from stainless steel and they have a titanium aluminum nitride coating on them for increased durability and longevity. Taking apart the rest of the grinder to gain access to the pre-breaker burr is really easy. You're basically just gonna hold the grinder in the same fashion, uh, stabilizing the handle here, and then you're gonna reach inside here. It's a little deep, but you can get to this wing nut that's in here that you can remove that has some detents on it. That is what holds the bottom of the um, pre-breaker burr to the shaft. So once you have that out, you can pull the rest of that out of there. You're gonna have a washer that again, you're gonna to wanna to note the orientation of. The ridged portion goes up towards the top of the grinder. You've got a spring here that also the orientation is important. It sits in there like this. So the, the wider portion of the spring is at the top and the skinnier portion of the spring is what makes contact with the top of the burr. So just remember that. The pre-breaker burr obviously has a bigger kind of beefier pre-breaking section with coarser teeth here on the bottom edge versus the finishing burr. Um, while it does still have sort of a pre-breaking kind of section, it has longer and more fine finishing teeth. For cleaning, if you want to take the shaft out, the pre-breaker shaft, you can. Um, and you will notice that the bearing and upper washer comes with it. That's fine and perfectly normal. These are designed to fit looser and sort of come out for cleaning purposes. You'll notice that there are two more bearings that are much tighter fitting that stay in the upper housing and also in the finishing burr housing. And what's nice about the amount of bearings that this thing has in it is that there's very, very minimal shaft play. The tolerances in this grinder seem to be really nice and overall that just aids in a much better grinding experience. Putting the grinder back together is simple and it's just the reverse order of taking it apart, obviously. Just be, again, mindful of the orientation of uh, the washers and the spring when you're putting this together. One thing that I like to do that they actually recommend you do with this grinder is not tighten the wing nut for the pre-breaker all the way. Once you've tightened it up and it stops turning, back it off two detent notches, and that'll just ensure that when you go as fine as you can with the pre-breaker, um, the cone burr won't make contact with the collar burr or the stationary burr uh, and do any damage to the burrs. Putting the finishing burr back together, again, just the reverse of taking it apart. Just be mindful of the orientation of your washer. When reinstalling the finishing burr housing back onto the main housing of the grinder, you're gonna wanna make sure that your um, two shafts are lined up the best they can. If they're not lining up when you're putting this together, you can sort of rotate the shaft a little bit to, to make sure that those get lined up and notch into each other correctly. Another thing that I like to do is try to get the zero point as close as possible to the indicator on the body. Once you have this all back together, again, stabilize or isolate the, um, the handle here with the palm of your hand while holding the grinder, and then go ahead and just tighten up that finishing burr retaining bolt a little bit. You don't have to really crank it, you just wanna make sure it's tight enough to where it's not gonna go anywhere. And that is disassembling and reassembling the Momentum hand grinder. There are a whole bunch of different ways that you can set up the pre-breaker and finishing burr um, in combination again with the sieves and the dechaff screen to get some really interesting results with this grinder. So this grinder truly is about experimenting and trying different things. With the pre-breaker, you have 60 steps of adjustment ranging from 600 to 3000 micron particle size. Um, so you've got a lot of adjustability and a lot of room for experimenting with the pre-breaker. And then the finishing burr, you've got 80 steps or 80 clicks of adjustment and and each one of those clicks is an 18 micron burr gap change. So you've got some really good controllability to sort of fine tune this for multiple brewing methods and really get your coffees dialed in. When I first took the Momentum Grinder out of the box, I followed their setup instructions kind of in their quick start guide of having the pre-breaker set at one full rotation off of zero and having the finishing burr also set one full rotation off of zero for a filter brew. And I've got to say, I was really impressed with the first brew that I did right out of the 
the gate with this. Um, from there, I started, ex started experimenting with putting the, the um, pre-breaker burr in different positions and really seeing how that impacted the brew. So again, it's really all about experimenting with this grinder. I think the only thing left to do at this point is brew a cup of coffee and see how it tastes. I am gonna throw the decaf screen in here because this coffee that I currently have right now, it's a double washed Ethiopia from High Bank Coffee Roasters. It has a good amount of chaff on it. So I'm gonna throw the chaff screen in here and, and see how effective that is with this coffee. So I'm setting this up as one full rotation of the pre-breaker burr and one full rotation plus two clicks of the finishing burr. In case you're wondering, the coffee I'm brewing is this double washed Ethiopia from High Bank and it is absolutely fantastic. If they still have it, I highly recommend you order yourself a bag of this and treat yourself because it is really good. The funnel for a fellow stag fits perfectly in the top of a lot of hand grinders. So a little, little life hack there for you if you weren't already aware of that. Oh, it smells amazing. There's a little bit of chaff in there, but let's see how our chaff collector did. Eh, got a little bit, not a ton. I don't know if you can see that, but it did capture a little bit of chaff. So that's nice, definitely works. There's also a little bit larger chunk of coffee here, like I was saying, but not too bad. I'm not using a sieve, but I do like to take the lid and put it on top of the catch cup here and just sort of shake my grounds up a little bit, get them all homogenized. Grind looks really good, really nice and consistent. Smells really good. Mm, like tangerine, lemon. This really good, like sort of lingering kind of black tea finish that's just it's really, really tasty. This is a fantastic coffee and the Momentum Grinder has definitely done a good job of highlighting the really beautiful flavor characteristics of this particular coffee. Not only have I been getting delicious filter brews with this grinder, I've also been getting really tasty shots of espresso. So if you're somebody that likes to do espresso with a hand grinder as well, I think the Momentum would probably serve you really well. So from its build quality, its fit and finish, and just its overall uniqueness, the ability to have independently adjustable pre-breaker and finishing burr, the adjustable length um, handle, the uh, decaf screen, the sieves that you can put in the um, catch cup. It's just overall, it's a really unique and interesting hand grinder, and I've really been enjoying using it. Whether or not I think it's worth the money or I think it's worth the money in your situation, that's kind of for you to determine. I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and we'll see you on the next one.